Hi, welcome back to my page. Welcome back to my uh, channel. Um, I'm Garden Lady Zoe. Today I'm talking about uh, summer squash. Summer squash is something that a lot of us like, whether you really think of it as being summer squash or not. Um, zucchini, yellow squash, that sort of thing. So today I'm going to tell you about summer squash from where where it is thought to have originated to harvesting it and what you do with it afterwards. Um, it's believed that uh, summer squash originated in Central America and Mexico when they were doing some excavations back in the early 1900s. They came across some seeds uh, and found that they were, they were indeed squash seeds and that they probably dated back as far as 7000 BC. Um, squash, squash is the Algonquin word for eaten green. Um, some characteristics of summer squash are that they have a soft, edible skin. Um, they are high in vitamin A and vitamin C, um, but they do have a short shelf life. Um, when you purchase uh, or pick uh, summer squash, you need to put it in the refrigerator and it usually saves well in the refrigerator for four or five days. Um, some examples of summer squash are zucchini, yellow squash and uh, scallop squash also known as patty pan squash um, there are many varieties of zucchini um, usually when you go to the grocery store you'll see the dark green zucchini and they're not real big i think that's the size that most people like because it's easy to slice it up and the seeds have not gotten big yet so that they're really tender and really easy to fry or steam or do whatever you would like to with. But um, there's also light green zucchini. There are striped zucchini that kind of have ridges. They're not smooth like the others. And that's what I like to grow. It's a, a, a variety of Italian zucchini. And as you can see, it uh, has those light green stripes on it that are really kind of ridges on the outside of that zucchini. Um, to me, they have a really good nutty taste um, and even when they get to this size, I still fry them somewhat until they get a little bit larger. Um, there's also round zucchini that a lot of people like. Um, you can uh, take the pulp out of the middle of it, uh, that seedy part, real seedy part, and chop it up and like saute it in oil or butter in a pan and just let it, you know, cook for a little bit. Um, you can add any kind of seasonings to it you like. You can make it savory or you can make it sweet. Um, you can add a little bit of brown sugar to it, you know, just whatever you like. There's also golden zucchini, which is actually just even brighter yellow than our normal yellow squash. So um, it's just whatever you prefer, or maybe you've never grown any of it and you would like to try something. Uh, but, you know, I would, I would, I kind of trade off every year. Sometimes I get different things to try and sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Um, also yellow squash. There's crook nick yellow squash and there's also straight nick. A lot of people like straight nick because you, you can slice it up so easy for frying or for steaming, um, that sort of thing. But I've always been partial to the crook nick. The crook nick yellow squash is an heirloom seed uh, it's an heirloom variety, um, but uh, I've just, I don't know. That's just what I like. Um, sometimes uh, yellow squash can also be green on the bottom portion of it, almost like the green of a Granny Smith apple, and the rest of it is kind of uh, a lemon yellow. And that is uh, a straight neck squash, and I would like to try that next year because um, that just has me kind of interested. It's called Zephyr. Um, the patty pan squash, um, they vary in sizes. A lot of times they're small, but I have seen some patty pan squash that people have grown that actually got pretty big. And I don't know if it has to do with the nutrients in the soil, how much water they get, you know, how much rain they get or how much they water their garden. But um, there are white uh, patty pans, green patty pans and yellow patty pans. And the yellow patty pans are usually pretty bright yellow. They're kind of shaped like what we think of a, a UFO um, or uh, those old toys that kids used to play with, those tops. Um, but uh, they're, they've got the scalloped edges 
and uh, a lot of people like to slice them and fry them or grill them. Um, there are lots of uses for squash. Um, you can uh, fry them, of course. Most of us like fried squash. Some people even like to make some kind of dip, a ranch dip or a horseradish dip or something like that to go with squash. Um, but you can grill it, you can steam it, you can bake it, um, you can stuff it. If you have like a squash that gets away from you, it just gets so big, like the zucchini, you can take that pulp out of the middle of it um, and stuff it with, with something like some meat, rice mixture, vegetable mixture, um, and bake that in the oven. Although in the summer, we usually don't like to have our oven on, but that is pretty good. Um, you can also spiral. If you have a, a spiraling tool, uh, the one I have is just a little handheld spiraling tool called a Vegetti, and you can get them at Walmart, you can get them at Amazon, and they usually run anywhere from about eight to ten dollars, depending on where you buy it. Um, and the Vegetti is great because it kind of takes the place of pasta, I guess, for spaghetti, um, or you could just you could just cook it on its own after it's like that it doesn't take long it takes about three minutes and it's done and you can add maybe a little bit of butter or oil and some seasoning to it and you have yourself a vegetable side dish um, zucchini is also used by many people who are watching their carbs um, in place of lasagna noodles you slice them lengthwise um, and you you probably uh, sprinkle a little salt on it to kind of let some of the moisture drain out of it first and then you put it in your spaghetti in place of your noodles and it really is good my mom has made it before and i really did like that um you can also grate up your zucchini to use in zucchini bread or zucchini cake um, i make a zucchini spice cake that is really really good and it has a um, lemon cream cheese frosting on it Sometimes I make it uh, as a layered cake, but I'm not crazy about making layered cakes. So, um, but uh, it's, it's good either way. Um, I also grate up zucchini and yellow squash for that matter for uh, relish. Um, my mom has a wonderful recipe for uh, yellow squash relish um, and it's just delicious. And then I had come across an old fashioned recipe for zucchini relish. Um, last week and I had lots of zucchini so I um, grated up I think it was like about 12 cups of zucchini and maybe a little yellow squash in there too and put some salt on it and let it sit for about eight hours that was the longest part of the whole process of canning it and uh, then I had to uh, rinse and drain it and add bell peppers and onions and that sort of thing to it but it was it was really it turned out really well um, in fact here is a jar of it. You can see it's got some red bell pepper in it. You can also dehydrate your squash if you want to save some squash for later but you don't want to take up a lot of room in your freezer or you don't want to can squash. Um, you can always, um, if you have a dehydrator, um, you can slice it up. Now this had bigger seeds in it. You can see that this was a larger squash, but that's okay. I don't really mind. Um, and uh, just dehydrate it for about six to eight hours at about 135 degrees. Now this bag has been opened several times by me because I keep it in the freezer, but every once in a while I think, oh, I want a bite of dehydrated yellow squash because um, when I dehydrated it, it really made the sugars in the squash come out. It's a really good snack. You could also slice your zucchini super thin if you have one of those mandolin slicers which i'm scared to death of <laughs> um, you can slice your zucchini really thin kind of brush it with a little bit of uh, like olive oil and maybe put a little garlic or oregano or basil or whatever you like on it and put it in the oven at a low temperature and leave them in there until they they turn crispy and they are absolutely delicious and that's one of the things i would like to do it's just i don't want my oven on right now um, I've also used zucchini and yellow squash in soup. I came across a recipe for zucchini soup a couple of years ago, and it was really kind of odd because um, it called for like a quarter cup of malto meal, just dry malto meal. Well, you, you cooked the, the squash and the onion and the chicken broth and you added that malto meal to it. So you, you know what kind of texture malto meal has. 
but after you let it cool for so long, then you put it in your blender and blend it up, and then it's perfectly smooth, and that malto meal added a little bit of thickness to the soup. Well, after you did that, then you could add cream or milk or something to it, but I just liked it the way it was. I didn't really care for adding any dairy to it, and I, I kind of made that a savory type soup, but it was really good and light uh, for summertime. Uh, I don't really put soup and summer together too much because of our hot weather here, but uh, it w really was good. And then I decided, well, I wonder what would happen if I made some soup with yellow squash. So I did the same thing using yellow squash, except I used spices that you would use to make butternut squash. And it still had the malto meal in it, that quarter cup of malto meal, but it was delicious too. And um, I tried freezing some, but it really didn't turn out the way I would have wanted it to. And I don't think canning it would be a way to go either. I, 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 I don't know, I haven't really figured that one out yet. Um, so, besides all the ways you can use uh, zucchini, yellow squash, um, if you decide that you really want to plant some, you know, maybe next summer have a garden. Start, start planning for it right now. Keep in mind that if you want to grow summer squash, that you need to make sure you have plenty of room because you don't want it growing into other things. You don't want the plants growing into each other. Um, they need that space. They need to have that air circulation around the plants. Um, the bees also need to be able to find the blossoms uh, so they can pollinate the blossoms so that you'll have squash because if you've ever seen what you think is like a little squash growing on your plant and then all of a sudden it gets soft and rots and falls off that's because the blossom never got fertilized um, so make sure you keep plenty of room when when you plant your squash you can either plant like say two to three seeds per hill that are like three feet apart or you can plant your squash in a row and then when it's when the plants come up, you can go through and weed them out. Um, it's better to have too many plants to start with and not enough. Um, it's better to weed them out. And I always hate to pull up a plant, but um, sometimes you just have to because you don't want to end up with a big mess because then it'll be so hard to find your squash. That's another thing. If, if there's too many leaves all together, uh, then it's hard to see your squash, especially with zucchini, because zucchini being green, uh, for the most part, they will just blend in with the stems and the leaves on your plants, and it's hard to see them sometimes until they get so big that it's like, oh no, what do I do with them now? Um, so make sure uh, you read about different varieties of squash, whether it's yellow squash or it's zucchini, and find what you think would be best for you. Um, remember that some zucchini will kind of vine out too, and you really don't want zucchini that vine out unless you have just really a lot of room. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, here in Southwest Oklahoma, the time to plant, to start planting squash is around the 15th of April most years. By then we've had our last freeze. This year we didn't, we didn't have, we had a freeze and snow in like ice uh, towards the end, it was like freezing rain, I guess, towards the end of April. And so a lot of things that we had set out, a lot of our fruit crops, we lost a lot of things uh, because of that. And it lasted a couple of days. Uh, it was really just kind of unheard of because here we hadn't hardly had a winter at all and all of a sudden that cold weather showed up. So make sure your weather's warm enough, um, your soil's warm, plant, plant your seeds. Like if you're planting in hills, two or three seeds in your hill and plant them about an inch deep um, and if you're planting them in a row still an inch deep but make sure that you um, weed them out so that they're about 36 your plants are about 36 inches apart um, sometimes I think oh I can put them a little bit closer to than that and then I find out no that wasn't a good idea so I end up pulling up the plants when they get larger um, but it's always better to have more plants than not have enough because you don't want to have to go back in and reseed again. Um, if you're in a hurry to have squash, summer squash, you can always start your plants indoors. Um, if you have a greenhouse, start them in your greenhouse. If you have an area in your house where you, you know, 
do your gardening to get ready, you know, growing your plants, get them started. Um, you can always start your squash plants early, especially if you go to farmer's markets to sell, um, or you just, or for some reason, maybe you have a gr short growing season and you want to get the stuff in the ground and, and get it harvested so you can do what you need to do. Um, just remember that. Um, squash grows in almost any kind of soil. Um, I do have that heavy soil here, but it grows well here. Um, my dad had sandy soil at his house. It grew really well at his house. Um, so uh, just keep in mind though, if you have a sandy, more porous soil, you'll probably need to water more. Um, it's suggested that you give squash at least an inch of water a week. Um, that water needs to penetrate down about four inches into your soil to be considered a good watering. And um, if you're just standing there with a water hose spraying your, your plants, that's really not doing them much good at all, if any. I don't, it, they, they really need a good watering one, at least once a week. Um, and if your plants just grow like zucchini, they just grow and grow, they really spread out. Sometimes if they're too close, they may grow, you know, they may invade each other's space. Um, you can prune some of the lower leaves on your plant. Um, I'm no expert at that. I just watched a video about it. Mich Michigan Farmer on YouTube put a video on about pruning uh, squash plants. So you may want to watch that. Um, it kind of scares me to do that. Uh, living where we live, having problems with squash bugs um, and that sort of thing. You know, I worry about uh, that attracting the bugs to that area. I don't know if it really does, but it's just kind of a worry of mine. Also in Michigan, they have probably different pests, different diseases to deal with than we have here and as them. But still, it's interesting to watch his videos. I learn a lot from him. Um, so also keep in mind if you're, if you like to save seeds from one year to the next because you grow heirloom varieties of vegetables, Keep in mind, if you have your zucchini and your yellow squash growing close together, that they're probably gonna get cross-pollinated by the bees in your area. So then if you try to save the seeds from the vegetables off those vines, um, then they may not be the same as the seeds that you originally planted. Um, and so when you plant those the following year, your vegetables won't be the same. Uh, that's something uh, to definitely keep in mind. I've never kept squash seeds. I guess I could, um, but I never have. Uh, I usually try to stick with as many heirloom varieties of plants as I can, but there's some things that I like that aren't, that aren't heirloom. Um, when we talk about growing squash, the first thing that comes to a lot of our minds is squash bugs, especially here in southwest Oklahoma, and maybe even squash vine borers. Um, there's some different ways to keep them away from your uh, plants, um, and that's by planting like nasturtiums or marigolds around your plants. They help repair it repel insects. Nasturtiums are hard to grow here in southwest Oklahoma though. They don't do well with heat, but marigolds do wonderful. Um, since your squash plants should be planted so far apart, you could actually plant just like a, just a little bitty patch of radishes between the plants because a lot of bugs, including squash bugs, do not like radishes at all. Um, then we, we can talk about the fact that squash, beans, and corn are known as the three sisters by the Native Americans. They usually grew those three crops together and there was a reason for that um, because they really benefited each other in many ways. Um, if, you have, if you're growing some kind of bee or peen, pea, then uh, it's gonna put a lot of nitrogen into the soil, which is good for the corn and the squash. Um, also, garlic is great. It repels a lot of insects. Aphids do not like uh, garlic at all. Aphids will stay away. Um, parsley, um, basil keeps a lot of uh, bugs away as well. And uh, peppermint. But you don't really want to plant peppermint plants out in your garden because they spread very quickly and they'll try to overtake your garden. But you can buy peppermint oil, mix some peppermint oil in with some water 
and um, spray that on the ground around your plant and a little bit on the base of your plant, I would say. And that is supposed to help repel the squash bugs as well. I also use diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth can be purchased at any nursery, uh, Walmart, um, Home Depot, um, Amazon, uh, and it's just a white powdery substance that you can uh, sprinkle on your plants, on the ground around your plants, and when the squash bugs come around and try to eat anything and they get that diatomaceous earth inside of them, it like it cuts up their insides. Now it's safe for humans because there's nothing nothing about it that's going to hurt us but when you plant if you use it when you when you pick your squash you take it in the house and you wash it well before you eat it um, and that's that's the biggest thing about that the one crop not to plant next to your potatoes i mean next to your squash is potatoes uh, potatoes are susceptible to potato blight um, which will kill the plants and squash plants are also also susceptible to it so make sure that you plant them far away from each other and it's not just summer squash it's winter squash too any kind of squash plant make sure you do not plant them near your potatoes i hope you enjoyed this video today if you enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up um, if you have not subscribed to my channel please do so if you're viewing this on Facebook and you don't have a YouTube page, um, please share my video on your Facebook page for your fellow, your friends to see. You might have some friends that are gardeners or friends who would like to garden but don't know where to start. And like I have said before, I'm no professional gardener, but I'm always studying about different crops and, and the good best ways to grow them. And sometimes I find out that I plant things that no matter what I do, they don't do well here. Um, and that might have to do with our weather here, uh, probably so, like with the rhubarb and the, and the Brussels sprouts. They're holding on right now, but um, hopefully they make it through the year. Um, I would love to have some more Brussels sprout crops in, in fall, and I would definitely like to have uh, some rhubarb next spring for cobblers and jams and that sort of thing. So if you have any ideas about what you would like um, me to do a video on, please let me know. You can either email me at my email address on my YouTube page, or you can send me a message on my Garden Lady Zoe Facebook page. If you find my Garden Lady Zoe Facebook page, please uh, like it, and then anything I post you will see on your, fo your Facebook page. Um, I will also be posting some recipes for squash. Um, I would like to do some cooking videos, but it's a little hot in my kitchen right now, so um, once I get all that taken care of, then I can start doing some uh, cooking videos, um, maybe for the squash relish and some other squash dishes and, and dishes with the other vegetables in my garden as well. Um, I hope you all are doing well and uh, continue to do well. Take care of yourselves and your families and see you next time. Bye!